Hello there, welcome to Yolo Watolo. It's been a minute because Lonel and I have been traveling internationally and domestically and we're excited to chat with you guys today. Great topic. Um, let me see if I could get Lonel on here. Let me let... I don't see him on here. I know Lonel is actually traveling too and he'll divulge where he be at in just a, a minute when we get him on. Hey Kevin, Kevin is our producer today and he's sitting right across from me. Look, let me show you actually. You see my little cool setup here? What's up, what's up? <laughs> Kevin got his little cameo in there. Okay, let me try to set this up real quick. Okay, so I hope you guys are having a good day. I see Lonel's watching. Let me see if I can add him. Today we are going to talk about... All right, uh, Facebook, let's try this one more time. Place up in your head. Hey, you sound good. You sound good. What is that about? I don't know. Facebook has been like having all these sort of audio issues in the last what year? Oh, dear Zuckerberg. Namaste. Namaste, Zuckerberg. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? It's been forever. I'm, I know it's been a minute, right? Okay, so I'm great. Um, you know, I've been traveling too, and so so have you. Um, and I think the last time we talked, I've been to Atlanta and back for a journalism convention. I went to LA for a little bit of work play. And then I went to Tulum and Cancun for two weddings in one week. Can you believe that? Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> but fun, but isn't that, that's what life is supposed to be. It's supposed to be lived and lived fully. I love it. And, that we're doing, and I've been doing yes. the same thing. And I haven't been to any weddings this summer, but I've been uh on the road a lot uh just a lot <laughs> and it's not letting yeah. up anytime soon i'm going to be traveling pretty much at least through october so okay so some highlights i saw you were, when i was in la you were in sonoma yes that was nice it was a brief trip a brief visit but i love being in the wine country my sister came up yes me too uh, and hung out with me and we had a great dinner and that was nice and i, I totally forgot that um uh, the creator, Schultz, Charles Schultz, uh, creator of the Peanuts, yeah. was from Santa Rosa, yeah. which is the town I had to in. Charlie Brown. And like the whole town was all Peanuts characters. I was like, oh. And then it hit me as I'm walking down the street. I'm like, they sure have a lot of Charlie Brown stuff here. And I was like, oh, uh. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. I had just totally forgotten that. And, you know, even growing up in the Bay Area, we knew that, but I just forgot about it. Um, but I did enjoy that. Yeah. I've uh, been up to Seattle. I took the Amtrak down. Uh, not too long ago, which was fun, from um, Seattle down to Portland, and saw my girl Sarah Centrella, whose new book I'm actually working. Maybe we'll talk about that at some point. Uh, but we had a great time. So yeah. I've been doing a lot of travel. I've been doing rail travel more uh, this summer too, on those, you know, on Amtrak. I took my cousin, my not my cousin, I took my little nephew up to this amusement park in North Carolina, and we took the Amtrak. So I've been busy, just busy. But and I've got some yeah. uh, international stuff coming up. Don't you love Amtrak? I know we're always on planes, but I did take the Amtrak a few times recently. Yeah. And it's just, I love the the railroad. I mean, I, there's something about being on a train that is just like, huh. Yeah, it's right? very relaxing. Like you, you you can, computer. You can, it's a great way to unwind, actually. You know, we talk about detoxing yes. all the time. And uh, and even though they have Wi-Fi, which is so spotty, you feel like you're detoxing anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, but it is a great way. And, I, you know, I've been writing more and it's really, and it's just such, uh, a con it's a, an environment that's conducive to creativity and for writing. For me, I just can sit in, and, especially when you're passing uh, such beautiful scenery and up along the Pacific Northwest and down the California coast. Oh, yeah, that's just pristine. It's just beautiful. So, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I just need them to update yeah, the train I think, too. I think in the last. Yeah. In the last six months, um, I've been to New York, I think, four wow. times. And uh, one of which. <laughs> I rode uh, the, I went to Grand Central Station and I rode it up north uh, to my friend um, has a place in Beacon just before Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie and Beacon, you should definitely go to those I've cities. Been to it's, it's just so amazing. And yeah, it's, it's amazing, right? And then like just taking the, the Hudson line and you're just like along the river, it seems like you're just kind of gliding on it. And especially during um, the fall season when the foliage and all the trees are changing and it just is... There is something uh, calming and relaxing about being on the train. I agree. And I just missed you in Sonoma. I was in Sonoma and Sausalito as well um, recently. So I think yeah, we just we've like literally missed each other by a few weeks. Chris crossing but, and then yeah. 
when I'm up, you're asleep, and when you're asleep, I'm away. It's just crazy, you know. But our schedules have been nuts. I know. But it's been wonderful. I wouldn't trade this experience for anything. But the important thing is, we're here today. Yes. I know. Woo -woo. I just, uh, I really love uh, uh, just connecting with people who you just know that there's that. Uh, I mean, there's something that money can't buy. Is this like awesome connection that you have when you meet people, and that obviously first time you and I met in LA, it was just like, boom, right. right away. And, and I've learned to trust that more. I don't know if as you get older, um, I've learned to, I learned that it's okay to let go of older friends or friends that you guys are just at different places in your life. And if they come back, cool, if not cool. But I always used to think, oh, I've known this fool since I was like third grade. I need to keep in touch. And if you're, you know, there's a different season. Right. Speaking about seasons changing, there's this different season for all people and you know you just gotta um just be blessed when you meet the people who you just feel like that automatic kismet yeah. with that and it's one thing amazing. you know it is it is good to know that you know it's nice to keep up with people but if your journey is changing and your you know your seasons are changing and you're growing and they're not you're not growing on the same trajectory then it's essential that you part ways even if it's for a little while or a few years or the rest of your life because uh, if they're gonna, if they're not going to support yeah. your growth, then what do you need them? You know, to be. It doesn't mean you love them any less, but you, you need to yeah. be around. You need to immerse yourself in the energy that's going to propel you in the direction of, of which you're traveling now, and not wh where you feel you think you're obligated to stay stuck. No, no, yeah. let it go, boo. <laughs> and a good, a good way to know that I feel too is that just to. After you hang out with somebody or talk to somebody or even sometimes after you engage with somebody for 10 seconds, just to like be still enough to feel what you're feeling. And right away, you know, you you met people who in the first 10 seconds, five seconds, you're like, oh, they're trying to no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, stay away, stay away. Right. But so often oh. we're afraid to listen to that instinct. You know it right up, right on at the top of the, you know, at, like you said, in the first five, 10 seconds, you know but you don't always listen, yeah. but you, you're gonna learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it comes back to bite you, especially with um, perceived fake pe perceived friends or fake people, or if you, somebody just, you know, you meet and you, you know, maybe you're courting or dating and you're just like, hey, you really want it to happen because maybe your hormones are, you know, well, I think we're a little old, too old to have our hormones um, no, <laughs> leaving us. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> I was like, that, that's another show, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but one of my favorite quotes, I'll leave you with this for, for this first part of the segment is um, uh, that one of my favorite quotes from back in the day when, you know, how, like, I don't know if you had this, but in, when you're senior year, you have a yearbook and you can put your senior quote next to your senior portrait in high school. Uh, mine was there are three types of friends. Those like food and water whom you need every day. Those like, uh, uh, and then, oh, wait, was it? Now I'm gonna butcher it because I'm, uh, those like food and water whom you need to be in touch with every day. Those like medicine who you only need once in a while. And those like an illness, something you don't want, but it keeps coming back for you. <laughs> <laughs> you were very wise in high school, but that's very true. Very, very true. Very safe. I love that quote and it still rings true today. Okay. Kevin says, K I T, stay, keep in touch, stay cool. <laughs> like, D C M. Kids don't do that anymore, do they? I don't know, do they do? K I T, okay, that's cool. Is the, in, in anyway, this okay, so we can still so, look how pristine. Look how pristine yeah. this wow. is. Wow. That, that just, you know, I just get, I, that triggers me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know it does. Because it's in my folder. Uh, I keep stuff organized. <laughs> don't you guys hate people like that? I just can't stand people who are just like that organized. <laughs> But it's beautiful, it see? It and this has traveled like with me across the country today. many times. It looks like you did a year ago. Yeah, see? I know. I did it a while ago, and I like these. These are going to always be in <laughs> framed one day, maybe. I should frame it. Anyway, okay, so today we're talking about quieting that, that your mind. And I think even as, you know, people think that you and I are some of the more, most grounded people they, they've known, and people come to us for, like, spiritual advice like we go to each other for it or we actually need to always practice the thing is no matter where you are in life or where you are in your spiritual journey you always we're human beings so we fall into it but the key right is to just 
be aware of it, and then go to those things that work for you. Because there is no one right, right way. You gotta right? you gotta find what works for you, and then you gotta work it. Yeah, but anyway, basically, so we'll get to that in a bit. But okay, so in terms of our hot topics, um, there's one that's going viral right now. It's called the number neighbor, something like that. Did you hear yes. about this? Yes, I did. But I'm just like. People, for the people don't, you want to explain what it is, but for people who don't have, people just need lies. But go ahead, explain what it is. Yeah, so basically what it is, is there's this new challenge, challenge going on, and whereby you challenge somebody to text, um, either text or call, or just communicate with somebody that has a number digit away from yours. So like, if mine ends with two zero my seven digit phone number then you would call your number but with two one and engage with them <laughs> and there's been all sorts of you know um different kinds of reactions some positive and some downright scary nbc um i don't know if you guys ever i don't know if you followed their stay tuned app not app but it's a it's a, a instagram handle nbc has this thing called at stay tuned nbc i think it is right kevin uh, but anyway, um, I could check it later. But essentially what it is, is it's just like really quick social news like done via social media. And they were reporting that there was this uh, girl who did it and she was getting death threats. Like this guy was sending her death threats. It, and even after uh, she blocked him, he tried to call her or communicate with her through a, a private blocked number. Right. That is very yeah. scary. Uh, I guess some people like it. Some people, there's like friendships that have happened, but whatever. Sorry, I'm like, get lives, people. Well, look, how about this, people? <laughs> if you, why don't you start with like communicating with the numbers that you already have in your phone? I mean, you know, how, how often yes. are you doing that? Amen. Cheers. <laughs> why don't you just start there? If you, if you really need some communication, why don't you just foster the and nourish and massage the relationships that you currently have? So I'm sure your phone already has numbers in there that you don't call that you probably could call yeah. instead of potentially getting on someone else's nerves by do, dialing in as a stranger. That's just creepy to me. I'm just, that's just, that's just really, really. Me too. I'm like, don't be trying to text me. Creepy, right? I don't know you. Don't you. Know me? Right. Yes. Kevin posted, yeah, Kevin posted here, or your real life neighbors. True, yeah. right? Like, do you, do you know your neighbors? I know. Do you engage with I them? I know. There's, so like, the way my house sits, I know the guy who lives behind me. He like, cause he cuts my grass. Okay. We, you know, we exchange. I know his wife, but the others that are on. Mm -mm. I used to have a friend, yeah. a really good friend, who lived next door. And after he moved out, someone else has moved in, and I still, she's been there maybe six months, and I still haven't met her. Yeah. Okay. I, so, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm guilty of that. For I sure. know, right? <laughs> no, Kevin's right though. It's like, or get to, get know, to know your neighbors, neighbors right? Just go next door. Stranger. So yeah, instead of doing that challenge, how about the get to know your neighbor challenge? Because that's probably the person yeah. that's going to go. <laughs> Uh, more of a help to you in a situation than some random that you that's one digit off from your phone number. I don't know. Damn. People need to. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Don't, don't, don't. And I guess uh, I saw I saw one of the threads that this woman was too super peeved because somebody had texted her husband like really like late at night with that number trying to you know you just, just yeah. connect. You know you just don't know. No, no. <laughs> no, and, and and especially not after hours. That's that's really wrong. Yeah. No. Kevin, Kevin says cookies and brownies go a long <laughs> way <laughs> with my neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> especially if they're animals. exactly. Hey, get, I I take Meyer lemons if you want to drop off some Meyer lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely so. Pastries are good. Yes, yes. Um. Another uh, hot topic, too, is that, you know, I've been seeing, I've been having this dinner conversation, actually, a lot with people, and I just had it literally last night, um, about how we believe that Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, our phones, whatever is on the other side, these companies are listening into our conversation. And I remember, I was, like, literally speaking to my phone one day when I saw that, um, was it, like, a month or so ago, um, Gail King uh, for CBS News was interviewing, um, I think it was one of like the tech execs. Uh, the CEO at, of um, Instagram, I believe Instagram. it was. Yeah. CEO of Instagram. And she was like, okay, so a lot of my friends are talking about this, but um, you know, she put, basically put him on blast and asked him, when I'm talking about something random, how come there's an ad that pops up? 
right? And that happens to me all the time. And I talked about the same thing at a dinner party recently about almond milk and oat milk and how, uh, and I never have seen an almond or oat milk um, kind of IG or advertisement on Facebook or IG or whatever. Uh, but guess what? It popped up literally that night. And so Gail King put him on blast and was like, you know, are y'all listening in? And he was like, no. And he was trying to explain uh, uh, essentially that it could just be in your consciousness and maybe you didn't see the ads before. But I think I'm pretty aware and conscious of the apps that I see. Um, I just think it's strange. I find it to be yeah, like, very uh, strange. And I've had the same thing happen where uh, where I've had said something totally unrelated. Now, there are a certain number of ad, a certain type of ads that I receive, definitely. But one of them, the one that triggered me recently was, I don't know, but they were trying to, I don't know if it was insurance or something, but it was saying, if you make over this amount of money, and it was like what I reported on my income taxes last year, or the, was the amount in the ad. And that, and it was, so it wasn't like, you know, just a even number. And I just thought, mm, mm, mm. Mm. <laughs> And that has happened now a couple of times for that, from this uh, similar type of, I, I want to say it's an insurance company, but it comes up and it says, if you make more than this amount of money, you need to, and that amount of money is what I reported on my income tax. So yeah, it's just coincidence. Yeah, well, coincidence. Oh, Isn't that's that creepy? creepy. Oh, that's really specificity at its best. Um, yeah, I was shopping at this boutique one just once, window shopping recently, and there was this like, I love me some linen, linen clothing. So there are some shorts, and they're way too pricey. Uh, but I remember talking. It was some random esoteric name that I don't even remember. It's not like Gap or like you know whatever Everlane, whatever y'all wear. But uh, the crazy thing is that then all of a sudden I saw an app. I mean, a, a, not app, but an ad for that. Same thing in my IG. That same brand. And I was like, hmm, that's really weird. But I was at Williams Sonoma, and I was looking at this really cool, way too overpriced um, toaster oven. And the exact same toaster oven popped up as an ad. Yeah, it's... So I know they're geotagging. Something, yeah, there's anyway. it, it's something. Yeah, and they say that they're not listening, per se, because it would take up too much data, blah, 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 blah. But when, and when somebody starts explaining something away, that already, that to me is already an admission of guilt on some level. Now, you may not be, maybe your phone's not listening like Shazam, like you got to, you know, you got to wake it up to listen or Alexa or any yeah. of those things where you got, that's what they say, you got to technically wake the phone up for it to listen. I'm like, mm, something's not right. It may not be... I don't know what they're doing, but they're but something's not. It's it's just all too entirely coincidental. So um, yeah, uh, yes, it, yes. I'll leave you with this. So when you when you are private in your bedroom doing whatever you're doing, <laughs> cuddling, <laughs> whispering sweet nothings, <laughs> you better put your phone. Another reason to put your phone in the other room. <laughs> oh, no, anyway, okay, so I'll go on to yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Segment two, Deserve the Hump. Look at how pristine this looks, by the way. <laughs> okay, so I want to know, today's topic is all about quieting your mind. You and I talk about breath work all the time, so let's start with the obvious and then dig deeper. So, um, wisdom, thoughts. We want to hear from you guys at home, too. Uh, what do you do to quiet your mind when you're worrying about things that you have no control over? We've talked a lot about not worrying about stuff you can't control, like your bills. If you can't, if you can't control the bill payoff amount right now, what can you do to slowly pay that off? Or if you want this job and you can't control whether or not they hire you, have, you know, and you need to be employed, you know, you can obviously apply to more jobs, right? But so, what do you, what your thoughts on quieting your mind when it's going crazy, thinking about things too much? So there are several things for me. I mean, for me. Sometimes when I'm like, if I'm having some type of uh, a particular anxiety, say like a financial anxiety, because lately, like I've been kind of concerned about like what I've been spending. So it's like, well, wait, whoa, you got to pull that back in because you, you're looking at those numbers and I'm like, whoa, that's a little over budget. Um, and then I see a little Nordstrom post. <laughs> <laughs> That's my friend. But it's like, okay, so, Apple store. <laughs> like, okay, well, let's take Norton. Like, I was in there the other day, and I didn't need anything. I'm like, well, why are you in here? What's really going on? So for me, it's like, okay, you, get, you need to detach from the process or detach yourself from the behavior. I had to acknowledge what I was doing. And it's like, well, what's really going on? So then, then I, so I'm in here, like, talking to myself. Because you actually, you walked in this store, you did not need anything. Unfortunately, I caught myself, and I was able to leave without buying everything. Um, 
but uh so for me it's like I, in the moment i have to catch myself and like okay what are you doing what's called what's driving the anxiety and are you uh, is the behavior that you're exhibiting are you just trying to numb the anxiety so that you just that, you know you'll feel comfortable about something else or what can you do to actually face and relieve the anxiety and for me it's just going deeper into whatever my practice is if my practice is a breath you know, taking deep breaths, it's like, okay, I'll do 10 breaths in a minute. And then after a minute, I still feel the same way. For me, I got that means I got to do 10 more. And I may have to sit there and do that five or six times to kind of just, you know, bring myself back to center. But for me, it is always a constant um, uh, engagement with the process. You just got to be engaged in the process. And under, for me to understand what I, what's happening and not just kind of just sifting through it and then looking back and like, oh, yeah, I really was messed up. But um, like for me, catching myself in the moment, like, you know, you don't have any business in this store right now. You just got done complaining about, you know, these bills that you create. Now, I'm happy to be able to have them, but, you know, but at the same time, it's like, well, what's driving you? Why is this habitual? Why is this okay with you? And, you know, so you have to ask yourself those things in the moment. And that's not all for me. It's not always easy, but that is one, one practice that I try to do. I, and I've noticed, um, as I get older, I, it's, it's a little easier for me to do, but to really have accountability in the moment, in the midst of the anxiety, what's really going on here. So, you know, sometimes we, yeah. in our country, we're taught to like mask symptoms, you know, oh, I've got a headache, let me just take a uh, ibuprofen so the headache can go away. But you're not really getting to the source of what's causing the headache. You're just numbing, numbing the pain. Yeah. So yeah. that same thing from applies in our spiritual lives and our, in our actual lives. So I think when things come that produce anxiety, you just got to get to the root of why, why, what, what's, what brought you here. And then for me, yeah, it's really then, like I said, having the accountability in the moment and then whatever I'm practicing, sometimes I have to be very repetitive. I mean, I've sat there breathing for a long time on some instances, in some instances. So it just depends. How about for you? Um, I definitely think piggybacking off of what you just said is being in the present moment is so important because that's when the awareness like happens, right? Like I kept, caught myself doing this recently too. Like I went to one of my favorite boutiques here um, and I, you know, I tried some things on for funsies and then I was just like, you know what? This looks nice here. And I just left it there and I was like, and I don't need it. And I just thought about all the clothes that I actually need to get rid of as well. And I'm actually doing a lot better at that. But just being aware of it, and then taking action on the awareness is I think super important. Um, I don't think that one size fit all, fits all, even if it's worked for you in the past. Like sometimes I can turn to an app and meditate myself to sleep, or meditate and you know, the anxiety away or the worry away. But sometimes I just need like this morning, I woke up and just feeling like, you know, I had a lot of stuff to do because when I, um, you know, just got back from this this conference and all these travels, and then I came back to you know here hosting some friends that came from out of town, uh, and they were staying here, and then like I just felt like, Ugh. and then I got up and went on a run, and I, I felt so much better afterwards. So sometimes that helps. Sometimes reading um, one of your favorite self help books again helps. Uh, sometimes picking up the phone call phone. Helps. So I think those are all different, the different kind of um, things that you could do. And you know, sometimes one thing it works. Uh, one sometimes the other thing doesn't. So it really, really depends on who you are and where you are at in your life and what's going on in your head. But um, you know, I just think being aware is the first step, though. It is. Show. And you need to know who to call, and you need to know what works for you. And so that's that may take yeah. that's a, a job in itself, finding out what really works for you and what how you can personally be accountable in the moment so that you can get to the root of what's driving the anxiety yeah absolutely and for sure like if you're having a that's a really important point there it depends on who you're calling because you know if you're having an issue with okay you really don't like your job right and you want to do something in the more creative space and you just want to bounce your ideas off of somebody you're not going to call somebody that is judgy or sometimes that's your brand right. or a judgy sibling, right? I mean, j just knowing your tribe and also knowing that when you do call somebody, they're not all yes people. I was just about like, to say do yes. people who will be like, you know, Lanelle, you better call me when, you go, <laughs> when you're about to spend $1,000. Right. 
<laughs> and, there's a, and you need to learn That's how to be sure. that person that can receive that phone call to coach your friend through those, or you know, help them navigate through the, those times. Because there's a, there's a fine line between encouraging someone and then just kissing their butt. You know, trying to tell them, you know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I, I never want to discourage. And I always think about my friend Rod, who just moved to, he moved to New York like two years ago. And he told me recently, like, every last one of his friends told him, do not sell your condo and move to New York because that's just crazy, blah, 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 blah. And, but he really wanted to do it. I was like, listen, you have to listen to your heart. Worst case scenario, what's, what's going to happen? And he was like, this, that, and the other. I said, okay, well, that's manageable. You can survive that. And best case scenario, what can happen? And I said, wow, what if? What if that happens? So he has moved there, and he, has been, he couldn't be happier. And he recently just told me that I was literally the only friend. I didn't tell him not, I mean, to just throw caution to the wind, but it was like, you know, well, what, are the, what are the risks? If you do this, what's the good or the bad, potentially, that could happen. Yeah. And of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good, you know, or, or he's going to survive and thrive because he practices the principles. So it, it works. Yeah. But yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's important to be, to, to know how to, who to call and how to be the person to receive that call also and to reciprocate that. Absolutely. Yep. Amen. And you can call me anytime you're about to go shop and spend money because I'll give you my address for you to send me a box. <laughs> <laughs> <Get a> box. <laughs> All right. There. Segment three. <laughs> One of my favorites. So, talk to Tola. This is a little bit bent up, but it's actually, no, it actually looks pretty good. Mm, I don't turn around. Look <laughs> it looks a little wrinkled. Thank God. More wrinkles. Yeah, it's a wrinkle. Yes. <laughs> anyway, right. talk to us, baby. Okay. So, question um, the question that came in is, when you're feeling helpless and overwhelmed and you've gone to your breath, you've gone to all these apps, what do you do, baby Jesus? Okay, that's the baby Jesus part. But <laughs> so what, what do you do? I love our questions. They're what so do good. And kind of, I'll piggyback quickly on kind of what I was just talking about. You just, you keep going. Okay, I'm saying you, you still keep going. You keep doing the work. It doesn't, I equate it to like nourishing your body. You got to eat, you got to eat food. If you don't eat food, What's going to happen? You're going to probably get sick and wilder, wilder away. Uh, if you don't feed your spirit, the same thing is going to happen to you spiritually. So when those things happen, and, and sometimes when you, when you dive into something and you say, okay, well, I'm practicing this, but it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. Okay. Now you, you're giving the after, that's your after, that becomes your affirmation is that this is not working. So of course it's not going to work. You've got to learn how to release it and speak, you know, um, positive things but it's like you gotta just keep doing the work you just got to keep moving um because you are the only one that's that's impeding on on the success or the outcome that you want to have but just listen to what you're saying yeah. just listen to it because yeah. <laughs> i'm, I'm yeah. sure it's your what you're experiencing is a result of what you're thinking and saying yeah and you and i've talked about it and i'll say uh, many times and i'll say it again and again is be careful of your thoughts because your thoughts become your words and be careful what you say because your words become real and they bleed into your actions and then it's just this like crazy cycle. So to, I, I think it's perfectly fine to talk to yourself. I have time. plenty I mean, of I do glorious conversations with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I just, it's very important to be aware and then take action and if those actions don't help, then you figure out the next, do something else. And so like today I learned something brand new from you is that, you know, cause I've done the whole breath work thing a lot. And some, most of the time it works for me. So it just helps me reboot 10 deep breaths and I'm good. But I love the idea of you sitting there and just breathing, breathing, breathing till something comes. And it actually just reminded me right now of, I remember seeing a video about Oprah saying whenever she makes like this really big life decision, um, and, you know, she, like, I think she was at her Maui, like, ranch house when she said this on the porch. Um, and she said, you know, I'll sit here and just keep breathing until the answer comes. And there's something amazing about, like, that deeper dive. Because some people would just be like, okay, I'm... Yeah. Oh, ain't, not, ain't nothing coming. You're not <laughs> you know, even in the like, moment. Not you're, you're not even... You're Good. Oh, Audio? Not... I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, my I had an alarm yeah. go off. I think I was supposed to be taking a nap. Okay. So, I, but we're good. You should be able to hear me now. You have a nap alarm? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you hear me I now? I can, but it's it's really weird. I hear you twice. Okay. 
uh, too much of twenty good ain't a good thing either. No. <laughs> now, now it seems to be back to normal. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, that's because you had your sleep alarm going off. <laughs> that's a good one. You know, you you know you're doing you're doing a, you're doing life good when you're <laughs> when you got an alarm to remind you to, to take a nap. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I think for me, um, I'm gonna try that. I learned that you can you know sit for a longer time and be with your breath and be okay right. with that. Um, a lot of you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I go on a run sometimes or go work out, go on a walk, call somebody. And I love, love, love learning new things. I will forever be a student in, in that regard. Um, and one of the things that I really love here is, um, I even have notes on it here, is Byron Katie. I don't know if you've heard mm -hmm. of her. You heard of her, Byron Katie. She does this thing called The Work. It's literally, she calls it The Work. If you Google her, it's B-Y-R-O-N, Katie. And she says, when your head is going crazy with all these thoughts and worries, there's four questions that she, that she calls the work. The first question is you ask yourself, is it true? The second question is, are you absolutely sure that it's true? Then how do you react? The third question is, how do you react? What happens when you believe that thought? And then number four, who would you be without that thought? Mm. And that's really powerful, right? Because our thoughts are what's, what creates that anxiety, right? Because you could sit and worry about, oh, oh my God, um, you, know, uh, you know, I don't have enough money for rent or bills or whatever it is, but you can let that worry you down the hole or you could be like, okay, well, how do I solve that? Can I borrow some money? Can I get, you know, so this doesn't happen again? Can I, you know, find an, a side job or... Can you spend less? Can you cut your cable bill? Whatever it is, right? But I think that's super important. And I think her work, Byron Katie, speaks to just being aware. Right. And being aware to what's working literally and what's not when you're feeling like your mind's And I love how she crazy. sequenced those questions, especially number two, because it's like she asks you the first question, and then it's like, but are you sure? Because, you know, cause you, we are so tempted to <laughs> give our PR response, even to ourselves. Well, this is what I should say. But then when you have to follow up with, wait, but are you sure? It's like, wait, now, now you're like, oh, wait, you're yeah. calling me out. So now I've got to take an even deeper dive. Maybe I'm not so sure. <laughs> and I think that's, that's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And think about it, too. Uh, you know, like scientific studies show that in your head, when you're worrying about something that even isn't real, your body is actually going through the stress of it all. Body, mind, and spirit, right. I believe. Right. So when you are, uh, you have that worry, it helps also to know that everybody else that's living, that's a human being, has this thing called worry and anxiety, and we're all worried about something. Something. Right? Some, we are either worried about your finances or your personal relationship, your pre professional relationship, somebody's ill, you're ill, an accident. Like, there's always going to be that thing, but the key is really trying to figure out how to best deal with it accept what's happening at the moment and then take those steps you need to uh because guess what i really love that 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 you know that whole quote the bible quote is that this too shall pass right you know it, it does it always does think about every single time in our lives that something really like oh we didn't know we could get out of that you know whether it's a breakup whether it's financial stuff job stuff you know we're okay we're okay Right? We're always and it's here okay. to teach you something. Every challenge. Every challenge is here to, to teach, teach you something. You. Period. Yeah. And you and it's sometimes Basically. it's difficult to remember that in the moment, but yes, it's here to teach you. Oh, Lonel's yeah, favorite totally. segment. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Digital detox. <laughs> and I should just crumble this one. Yes. <laughs> you got a little match, a little lighter fluid. So boo. How you doing on your digital detox? It's been like a month since we've been traveling a lot. And I noticed that my patterns do change when I, um, you know, when I travel with digital detox. Sometimes for the sometimes for the better and sometimes not for the better. But how you been doing? I think I've fallen off the wagon a little bit, except, <laughs> but I do get back on the wagon. Because I, 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 what I've done now when I am traveling, not even uh, traveling, doesn't necessarily have to be internationally, but for me, I've always, I'll always make an excuse to use the phone. You know what I'm saying? I'll say, like, well, if I want to go out for a hike, I want to have my camera available so I can take pictures. 
And you know, and I know if I've got my my camera on and there's a notification or something, or I have the notifications off, but if I look at the thing, it's gonna be like, oh, there's something else, you know. So what I've done is turn my thing on airplane mode when I go out hiking or when I want to be in the moment. So that has been a little fix for me because then I'm not, I literally, I'm, I'm for, there's no new updates on the phone. So when I pull it out, it looks the same as it did last time I looked at it. And I'm take, I can take the pictures of the video that I, you know, that I claim that I want to use the phone for. So I've been trying to do that when I want to have moments in nature. And it's actually kind of nice because then I'm not getting telemarketing calls. <laughs> But I'm also not getting maybe potentially important phone calls. But I'm not making any more excuses because that time is my time. I don't need to be talking to you on the phone. Yeah, I think, too, it's like how much is too much is really a, the big question here, right? And, and what is acceptable right. for you, right? Because we can be like, I mean, for me, being on social media too much drains me. I can feel it draining me. However, like I went to Yosemite recently with a few people and I realized that the way I, I travel is I just love photos at, at the end of the day and the end of the year or several years later, it's something you can like go back to and have a look at and, you know, be reminded of the beautiful stuff that you've experienced and saw. Um, but while you're there, like how much time are, are you is spent on the phone? Like there was a friend that was there and she literally the whole time, Every single stop we made, she was on the phone the whole time taking photos. And to me, that's not being in the present moment. And that also feels, I feel that draining, like this, like, I feel like literally my, this, if I were, my energy were a, a cell phone, like the, the bars were like starting to deplete. Um, but one thing that I, I do is to be more aware is I do love taking photos and that's not going to change because I like it. Um, so I take some, I snap some photos real quick, then put away the phone that I enjoy it. It's different if I'm on the phone the whole time for me, because I don't feel the energy drain if I take a few photos and I'm done right. for artistic, creative purposes. Uh, and then I'm not there. I most 99% of the time never live post, you know, like I never post where I'm at because all sorts of crazies will show up where you're at. It's happened to me before. They're like, hey, 1130, I saw you at this diner, y'all. You know, I'm like, no, that's weird. <laughs> But so it's just like how much is too much and what works for you. And I think the only way is just to be real with yourself and be and, and feel and be in that moment. And so for me, if I'm here aimlessly, I just like looking at social media, I literally get the jitters. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've started, started to like when I find myself scrolling, I was like, why are you here scrolling? You should be writing. So I hear that voice in my head. I hear the people who all the different friends who have told me, but well, you need to finish this, you need to do that, you do that. And I'm like, okay, so when I'm just scrolling, it's like, okay, you need to be a little more productive right now. So, so yeah. Yeah, I have fallen off the wagon, but occasionally I climb back up on it. Yeah, exactly. And the thing, I think the, 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 the bottom line is, the thing is, it's okay if, you know, you fall off the wagon a little bit, you worry a little bit more than you usually do, and then you are aware right. of it. But not being aware of it and then not taking those little actions to try to get back on is what's going to get you. Because any sort of, whether it's a digital detox, any sort of detox or diet of any sort, I believe does not work. Because like anytime I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to be low carb, no sugar. It just really eats at me versus really switching it up in my head and saying that, you know, there's a time, time when I feel like having a burger. You know, I'm not going to have it all the time. Or when I feel like having pizza, I'm not going to eat the whole pizza or half the pizza. But just kind of being aware of the way you feel. And really, I, 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 it just makes me think, because I've since I've been traveling a lot and seeing friends, and what, you, what do you do when you see friends? It's as you eat, or you go to, when you go to dinner parties, is I realize that all of a sudden I, I overeat, and then I feel like crap afterwards. So I'm trying to be much more mindful of that consumption and of deep, you know, that sort of diet as well. But any sort of diet, digital diet, food diet, whatever it is, it's just about being, I think that today's, today's, I think, learning lesson or the bottom line to everything we're talking about here, whether it's peace of mind or digital detox or whatever it is, is presence. Yep. Being present. We are yeah. works in progress, Chad. We, this has been a struggle, this digital detox. <laughs> but we, we made some progress. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And, you know, the thing is, too, as I get older, I feel like, 
you know, my worries have shifted and changed to a way that I feel like I'm, I'm able to manage it better, you know, and my same thing with this, everything else I'm working on, the digital detox stuff, the whole career stuff, the whole friendship stuff, the whole everything stuff, you know, and, and I just am so blessed and aware that I have people like you and Kevin and other people that's part of the tribe that makes life just a little less, a little less bumpy. Right? Anyway, okay, so speaking of digital detox, we better roll. We better get out of here. It's been almost, what, has it been 30 minutes, Kevin? Yes, yeah. I have a, an Apple appointment. My little laptop is all jacked up, so the screen is, so I had to go see my, my Mac genius. And, you know, I'm not having that. You know what that is? That's God saying, you know what? Get off your devices. God's putting in the detox. <laughs> Goodbye, Twan. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's like, my PC is working great. <laughs> Shay. PC. Who uses PC? No, <laughs> well, that's because you're playing games on your phone okay. more often. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's last. Okay. See you guys. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>